زميلتنا ليندا عبد اللطيف عملت لقاء مهم مع جينيفر مورجان وزير الدوله والمبعوث الخاص للعمل المناخي الدولي في وزاره الخارجيه الالمانيه. اللقاء تناول عدد كبير من الموضوعات المهمه منها استعدادات مصر لاستضافه مؤتمر المناخ القادم بشرم الشيخ كوب 27 خلونا نشوف التقرير. مما لا شك فيه ان العالم اصبح في مواجهه شبح التغيرات المناخيه اللي بدا تاثيرها يظهر في العديد من المجالات الحيويه سواء بنتكلم عن زراعه مياه او طاقه الحقيقه اصبحنا امام مصير مجهول ومصر كانت من الدول اللي تنبهت للموضوع ده مبكرا وكانت من اوائل الدول اللي طرحت حلول للتكيف ومواجهه التغيرات المناخيه من ابرز الدول اللي معانا بيننا وبينهم تعاون كبير في مجال مواجهة التغيرات المناخية هي ألمانيا خصوصا في ظل استعدادات مصر لاستقبال مؤتمر المناخ اللي هيعقد في مدينة شرم الشيخ عشان كده بيساعدنا أن ينضم إلينا في برنامج صباح الخير يا مصر وزير الدولة والمبعوث الخاص للعمل المناخي الدولي بوزارة الخارجية الألمانية جانيفر لي مورغان We're very delighted to have you with us here today Let's start off first with your visit to Egypt and the meeting that you've held so far with the Egyptian officials. Could you please tell us a little bit more about those meetings and the agreements that have been reached between the Egyptian and the German side? Yeah, thank you. It's, it's wonderful to be here. And um, I've had the opportunity to meet with the foreign minister today, with the environment minister, uh, with the ambassador who works with the foreign minister, um, as well as with uh, members of civil society, uh, members of uh, various international financial institutions today. And I think the focus really has been on how to make COP27 a success. How do we keep the momentum moving forward when we know we are in a climate crisis? We know how vulnerable Egypt is, but the world and Africa is to the, to the climate crisis. So how specifically do we work together where Germany can work in partnership with Egypt as the COP presidency to uh, close the gap to 1.5 degrees, but also to support more on adaptation and the issues of loss and damage and finance. So all, all of the different issues were discussed today. As the special envoy for international climate action, how do you see the way Egypt deals with the climate change issue on the official and the non-official level as well? Well, I think it's clear that with the, the COP coming that you know the importance of the issue uh, is rising. I think we've seen in the past how Egypt has been engaging on renewable energy. I think there's uh, more room uh, uh, there on, um, on the renewable energy side of things and they're preparing their nationally determined contribution, which um, we're looking forward to seeing. Um, and I think looking uh, forward I think in the informal sector, there's just an amazing amount of work happening here by uh, scientific organizations, NGOs, whether it be in the urban sector, uh, whether it be in, in agriculture, which is such an important sector here. Um, so m moving forward, I would say. How can we proceed with the progress that has been made in Glasgow to COP27 that is to be held in the resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh? So the Glasgow COP, I think, was, had some good steps forward in it. It was uh, very clear that, you know, in order to avoid really mass climate catastrophes, we need to keep the global average temperature below a, a 1.5 degree rise. And in Glasgow, all countries committed to do that, and they committed to come back this year to do more to improve their target. So one question for COP27 is, what will each country be doing more of? But Glasgow also um, put the issues of loss and damage. What happens when, when people lose their homes, when crop yields are lost from the climate impacts? But it was uh, the beginning of a dialogue. So I think this year uh, in Egypt, we'll see, OK, what progress can be made there. Um, and then also on this issue of adaptation. So in a way, you can think of this as a implementation plus ambition cop, uh, where countries really need to get quite specific about how they're going to be implementing their commitments, um, how developed countries are, are going to move forward on providing uh, climate finance, uh, particularly the adaptation goals that have met, been met, and a, a continuum uh, from Glasgow to this important COP this year. The world is currently facing global crises. If we're speaking about COVID-19, the oil crisis, the Ukrainian-Russian war, how do you see the effect of such global crises on the COP27 negotiations? 
Well, I think there's two pieces there. I think one is if you look at all those crises, you see how important it is to stay moving forward on the energy transformation because peace, energy security, and climate uh, justice, I would say, all belong together. That means a, a fast transition to an efficient and renewable economy. And that puts more pressure than ever, I think, on, on that. The second is that we live in a complex world where we can't just pick one crisis and not deal with the other. The climate crisis has not gone away. Uh, quite the contrary, you see the impacts that are happening on agriculture combined with the, the impacts from the Russian uh, aggression on Ukraine. Um, and so it means we have to work even harder to keep this issue at the top level. Uh, and, and really make the connections to others. So making sure we don't go back into a very fossil fuel uh, organized world, but really move into a sustainable energy future. Speaking about fossil fuel, how will the war in Ukraine affect uh, the plans to replace fossil fuel energy to renewable energy in Germany? Well, in Germany, I mean, um, obviously, we're very focused on the Russian aggression on Ukraine and it, all of the horrific parts that come with it. And one piece of that certainly is our, our energy uh, mix. Um, Germany has committed to move forward to accelerate our transition to renewable energy and energy efficiency and have just put a whole range of new laws on the table in the parliament to move that forward more quickly, as is uh, Europe moving forward as well. However, at the same time, we need to be ending our dependence on Russian fossil fuels and uh, over time also on all fossil fuels. So there the, the German government is looking where it can be with the gap, filling that gap uh, from other countries uh, besides Russia. There is a fruitful cooperation actually between Egypt and Germany when we're speaking about clean energy and also technology localization as well as waste disposal. How do you see such cooperation? And we would like you also to speak a little bit more about such cooperation. Well, I think Germany and Egypt have a long history of cooperation, uh, whether it be around um, renewable energy and solar, uh, whether it be around waste, whether it be around um, urban um, solutions. And I think what we have an opportunity to do here is to accelerate that uh, around the COP, to be looking at how can um, Egypt, uh, which has uh, a plentiful domestic uh, energy supply, but even be diversifying more, bringing more uh, renewables in also for its own people, but also for export. Uh, there's a big discussion right now around green hydrogen. Uh, and if Egypt is able to increase the share of renewable energy domestically, then there could be opportunities then also there for export into Europe. Well, there's a global concern regarding um, climate change adaptation financing for the developing countries by the year 2025. What can actually be done regarding this regard? Well, it's a very important issue. I think it's very clear that um, the climate impacts are hitting harder and faster than was expected. And therefore, the issue of adaptation has risen um, as something that is here and now. And what needs to be done? Well, I think uh, a range of things. I mean, the, the commitments that were made in Glasgow, uh, we need to be looking at how we actually um, do uh, double that finance. Germany is very committed to that. Uh, we need to look at how we make that transparent. But we also, I think, need to be discussing what it means on the ground. How do you actually, and it's very local, local adaptation is incredibly important because as you can imagine, in different parts of Egypt, even the response will be different on, on agriculture, on water, et cetera. So I think we really need to empower the local um, the grassroots around the world, the local authorities, so that they can be developing those strategies and then get the support and finance that's needed. As the special and the first special envoy for international climate action, how do you see the way industrialized countries deal with the issue of climate change? Well, I think um, it's mixed. I mean, I think obviously we should not be in the year 2022 with emissions rising and the impacts happening around the world. Uh, the science has been clear for decades. And uh, Germany has been working, and we have a new government in Germany. I'm you know, part of a new government that's come in that has the climate crisis and, and addressing it as a key top priority. So that means that Germany is moving forward with a cl climate neutrality goal by 2045. We're looking to have 80% of renewables in our electricity mix by 2030. We're, 
doing all kinds of measures to take that leadership role. But clearly, industrialized countries have not taken uh, the full uh, action that has been needed uh, in order to avoid the situation now. We know, though, uh, we work in a global world now and that we need all major economies really to be stepping up. That's why the Paris Agreement was so important, because all countries made commitments to put forward their nationally determined contribution. So while industrialist countries have to take the lead and Germany's G7 presidency is working to have coal phase outs from industrialized countries by 2030 and, and support uh, on the finance side, we actually need all major economies to step it up because if we don't all act together, um, we won't get there. Do you agree with me that the developing countries are bearing the consequences of the climate crisis, which they have no hand in? I agree that um, developing countries, particularly the most vulnerable countries, the least developed countries, um, are suffering the consequences. I started my, my first trip as special envoy was to Bangladesh. You can't get more vulnerable than Bangladesh with basically no contribution to the problem. Uh, so indeed, you, you have a situation uh, which is a climate justice issue uh, where the most vulnerable and marginalized people around the world who have had nothing to do with, with causing the problem are suffering from it the most. And that's why we support also moving forward and, and finding solutions on the on the whole spectrum of how we support those people. There is a slogan actually that says, if politics fails, then companies must take over. How do you see such a slogan? I think it's a bit too simplistic. <laughs> I think that you need both. Uh, you need, uh, we need the private sector to step up. We need the investments to be going uh, in, in the direction of uh, renewable energy, of sustainable agriculture, etc. But th one of the key factors of that is key policy frameworks. So you need um, laws to say long, loud, and legal. That's what they say to me. I need long, loud, and legal signals so that I know where I can invest and not worry that there'll be a change of government and there'll be a whole new structure or a whole new signal coming in. So you need both. Uh, we need uh, responsible companies to be coming in and, and going with what the science is saying, but you also, government needs to deliver on the policy frameworks in order to provide that certainty for them. In your opinion, how can we draw people's attention to the upcoming danger of climate change? I think that there's many ways of drawing attention. I think, you know, people feel the impacts. They feel the air pollution, and air pollution is caused by burning of fossil fuels, which is also the main cause of, of the climate crisis. So I think by talking and uh, meeting people where they're at, what are their concerns for their children's health? What are their concerns also even for things like how they get their kids to school, uh, uh, whether it's they're stuck in traffic or whether or not, my gosh, wouldn't it be great to have a mobility system that could get them there, whether it be by bus, whether it be by bike with clean air. Uh, you can talk about um, increasing uh, shortages of, of food because different crops are impacted by climate change. So my experience is talking with people around the world. Um, last week I was in uh, Niger and in Mali who are suffering from the drought. I spoke with many women who are on the front line of climate change. And it doesn't take much. It just takes a little spark to, to engage people in what the, the situation is right now. They know things are changing. Um, and I think the key thing for people to understand is that, uh, especially people who, who have cars, who live uh, a very privileged lifestyle around the world, that they can make a huge difference. Everyone can make a huge difference in moving forward. What is a final message that you would like to send to the leaders of the world and the government officials, as well as the people, ahead of the COP27 and regarding the climate change issue? I guess I would say that the pathway forward to solve and address the climate crisis is also the pathway forward for economic well-being, for social stability, uh, and for the health of citizens. The recent IPCC report, this was one of the main findings. So move forward in uh, moving away from fossil fuels, moving into sustainability, because it will benefit you as leaders, but most importantly, it will benefit your people, especially your most vulnerable populations around the world. And we can all do this together. 
Your Excellency Jennifer Lee Morgan, State Secretary and the Special Envoy for International Climate Action for the Federal Foreign Office of Germany. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. يعني في الحقيقة هو لقاء مهم جدا أجاب على الكثير من الأسئلة اللي يمكن بيطرحها الشعوب كلهم يا شاذلي مش بس يمكن هنا في مصر يمكن كمان يتكلموا عن نقطة مهمة جدا وهي دور الدول النامية في يعني في الحقيقة هو دورهم ان هم ما فيش دور اصلا في انه يبقى في تلوث للمناخ او بنتكلم في برسنتج صغيره جدا جدا يمكن كمان هي اتكلمت جينيفر مورجان طبعا اتكلمت عن دور الافراد في تغيير يمكن سلوك بسيط جدا في حياتهم اليوميه يمكن يقلل من الانبعاثات بالتالي يؤثر على بشكل ايجابي طبعا على المناخ القضيه قضيه مهمه يا جماعه وقضيه انيه حاليه احنا مش بنتكلم في المستقبل فمن المفترض ان العالم كله يتحد لقضيه او ليه مشكله هتحصل مستقبلا لا المشكله حاصله بالفعل دلوقتي واحنا شفنا تاثيرها في دول كتيره جدا شفنا حرائق غابات شفنا فيضانات شفنا سيول وامطار غزيره في دول كتيره جدا في العالم فتاثير المشكله تاثير قوي وجديد على حاجات كتيره جدا على الزراعات كمان وعلى الحياه البحريه وعلى الحياه البريه فيجب على دول العالم كله انه يتحد وخاصة طبعا الدول الصناعية الكبرى اللي المفروض تفي بالتزاماتها وتعهداتها تجاه الدول النامية اللي هي الأقل تأثيرا في التغيرات المناخية وعلى العكس من ده هي الأكثر تأثرا بما يحدث من تغيرات المناخ من طبعا الدول الصناعية الكبرى أو من تأثير ما يحدث في الدول الصناعية الكبرى في تعهدات كثيرة جدا تعهدت بها الدول الصناعية الكبرى تجاه الدول النامية أو تجاه أفريقيا عشان كده بيجي المؤتمر كاب 27 خلاص كلها ست شهور في شرم الشيخ مؤتمر مهم جدا هيتكلم عن هذا الأمر وهيتكلم كمان عن دعم الدول الأفريقية تحديدا عشان تقدر أن هي تواجه التغيرات المناخية دور بينقسم على الحكومات وكمان على المواطنين في تغيير بعض السلوكيات البسيطة وإحنا شايفين مصر اتجهت نحو الاقتصاد الأخضر خلال الفترة الماضية مبادرات عديدة زي مبادرة الإحلال للسيارات وعشان بنعمل إحلال وتبديل للسيارات المتقدمة ونغير السيارات من العمل بالوقود الأحفوري تعمل بالغاز الطبيعي ده برضو عشان نقلل كمان يا بسنت من التأثير على المناخ فاحنا عندنا مبادرات عندنا مبادرات مهمة جدا في هذا الإطار ده حقيقي ويمكن كمان ده اللي شايفينه الدول الكبرى يعني تأثير مصر وإصرار مصر على أنها يبقى لينا دور بما أن زي ما أنت قلت يا شازنين يمكن الدول النامية أو إحنا في مصر ملناش تأثير على التلوث المناخي زي الدول الصناعية الكبرى لكن إحنا لسنا بمنأى عما يحدث في العالم وإحنا لينا دور أن إحنا نساعد وده طبعا مصر بتعقد كاب 27 كمان ست شهور زي ما أنت قلت وهيبقى في مناقشات لما يحدث من تغيير المناخ وكمان زي ما أنت قلت يا دي مهم جدا ان احنا كافراد يبقى عندنا وعي بان احنا لازم نغير سلوكنا البسيط في حياتنا اليوميه من اول ان احنا نستخدم بلاستيك اقل لو احنا مش محتاجين نستخدم عربياتنا في مشاوير قريبه ننزل ونمشي يمكن دي احسن لصحتنا وكمان اكيد هيقلل من الانبعاثات يمكن سلوك صغير في يومنا هيساعد كتير قوي مش بس الحكومات عليها دور احنا كمان لينا دور عشان يبقى لينا او لاولادنا مستقبل احسن احنا بنشوف انه لغايه احنا في شهر خمسه الشتاء لسه موجود وده مش طبيعي فده طبعا يدل على التغير الكبير اللي بيحصل في المناخ بالحقيقه انا بنشكرك يا ليندا على اللقاء الجميل ده بنشكر طبعا ضيفتك جينيفر مورجان وزيره وزير الدوله والمبعوث الخاص للعمل المناخي الدولي في وزاره الخارجيه الالمانيه